Hello, Geometry family. Uh, today we're going to do a video on rhombuses. Yay, rhombus! All right, what's a rhombus? It's been a while. So a rhombus is like a slanty square. And technically, the definition of a rhombus is very, very, very basic. A rhombus is any quadrilateral with four congruent sides. As soon as it has four equal sides, bam, it's a rhombus. So this thing over here, that's a rhombus. Cool. Now, that's not the only thing I'm going to teach you, or this will be a really short video. But there's a lot of properties that occur once you know something is a rhombus. So if you know that you have a rhombus, if you know you have a quadrilateral with four equal sides, we're going to figure out some other things that are also true. Now, one of the properties that is also true of a rhombus is if you have a rhombus and you draw on the diagonals, the diagonals bisect the angles at the corner. But I don't want you to just take my word for it. We're going to go through and do a proof to show that that's actually the case. So if I know that ABCD is a rhombus and I'm curious about what happens to the diagonals, I can draw in a diagonal and say, okay, how can I prove that ABCD is also a parallelogram? and that those angles get bisected. I'm going to show you. So, ABCD is rhombus. Cool. Given. Two. Well, what can I do with that? Well, one of the things we can do is if our given says rhombus ABCD, I know that all of these sides are equal. So I know that AB, BC, CD, and DA are all congruent because all four sides of a rhombus are congruent. Okay, now they want us to prove that ABCD is a parallelogram. Well, I can do that. One way to prove something is a parallelogram is if it has two pairs of congruent opposite sides, it's automatically a parallelogram. So I'm going to say that. ABCD is a parallelogram because both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Okay, so what we've also proved is that if you have something with four equal sides, not only is it a rhombus, but a rhombus is a special type of parallelogram. Cool. Then I'm supposed to prove that DB bisects ABC. Well, if I'm going to show that that's true, I would need to find a way to show that 1 equals 4. So you know what I'm going to do to do that? I'm going to figure out whether those triangles are congruent and then use some CPCTC. So let me do that. Well, I've already got these sides are equal. And these triangles share a side. So I'm going to say DB is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And then if that's true, I would know that the triangle at the top, BAD, is congruent to the triangle at the bottom, BCD, by SSS, because all those sides are marked. And if those triangles are congruent, I would know angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, and angle 3 is congruent to angle 2 by CPCTC, because if you look at that, this would correspond with that because I'd have a reflection. This would correspond with that. And if 1 equals 4 and 3 equals 2, that must have been an angle bisector. So now I could say DB bisects angles ABC and ADC because it created two congruent parts. Cool. All right. So what have we just proved? We have proved that a rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. And we've also just shown that the diagonals bisect the angles. Nifty. What else can we figure out? All right. Let's see. It says given rhombus ABCD. All right. So they're telling me that this coordinate thing is a rhombus. Proof with coordinate geometry that BD is perpendicular to CA. All right, they want us to prove that that is a 90 degree angle. Okay, so I'm going to put it up here. The diagonals bisect the angles, 
and the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. That's something we're also about to learn. Let's see, how can I prove using coordinate geometry if things are perpendicular? Well, things are parallel if their slopes are equal. Slopes, perp oh yeah. If slopes are opposite reciprocal, then I can show that line segments are perpendicular. So I just need to find the slopes. So let me find the slope of BD. So if I find the slope of BD, I'm going to do rise over run. So I'm going to go down one, two, three, four. And I'm going to go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So negative four eighths, that's negative a half as a slope of BD. Then if I want the slope of AC, I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, right two. Up four, right two is two. Negative one half and two, those are opposite reciprocals because it's negative one half and two over one. So BD is perpendicular to CA because their slopes are opposite reciprocals. All right. So from this front page, we know that a rhombus is defined as anything with four equal sides. And then once I know it's a rhombus, I also know that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other and they cut the angles at the vertices in half. Cool. What else can we find out? All right. So a rhombus is a parallelogram. So it has all the properties of a parallelogram. Opposite sides are equal. Opposite angles are equal. Um, the diagonals bisect each other. Um, let's see, opposite sides, there were five properties of a parallelogram. Opposite sides equal, opposite angles equal. Diagonals bisect each other. Opposite sides are parallel. And then we also had consecutive angles are supplementary. Those were all properties that have to be true because a rhombus is already a parallelogram, but it also has its own specific properties. The four specific properties of a rhombus are, there are four congruent sides, so all four sides are congruent. We just proved that the diagonals bisect the angles. We also proved that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Okay. I think I accidentally said four properties. I was thinking the number four because it has four sides. But we have now four congruent sides, diagonals bisect each other, and the diagonals are perpendicular. Okay. So what if I wanted to prove that something is a rhombus? Like if I don't know yet, but I think it's a rhombus, the quickest way to prove a quadrilateral is a rhombus is to show that it has four congruent sides. Or, since you know it's a parallelogram, if you could show that something is a parallelogram, but also has like perpendicular diagonals, bam, it's a rhombus. Or you know it's a parallelogram and it bisects the angles, bam, rhombus as well. All right, now that we have properties, we're just going to use them to find sides and angles and stuff. All right. Now, this is one of those times where I'm going to ignore everything on the left and just focus on the image for a moment. So we know that this is a rhombus. So we know that all these are equal. And they told me DM is 10. Okay, so this whole thing, DM is 10, which means those have to be 5 and 5. LDO, L to D to O is 43. Okay. DL is 13. And they want me to find a whole bunch of other stuff. Well, I don't want to do that right now. I'm just going to find what I think I can find. All right. So in a rhombus, what have I got so far? Well, if DL is 13, everybody else on the side is 13. Cool. Let's see. If D, if this angle right here is 43, one of the rules was that the diagonals bisect the angles. So this also has to be 43. And here's a fun fact. If I look at the fact that these diagonals created triangles right here, this yellow triangle I just shaded has two sides that are 13, which means it's an isosceles triangle, which means that the base angles are equal. So that thing also has to be 43. And if that's 43, this is 43 too. 
And I know that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So these guys are all 90 degree angles. And if that's a 90, and I also have the 43 up here, 90 plus 43 plus this other missing thing has to add to 180. So 90 plus 43 is 133, which means I need 47 more to finish off the triangle, which makes this 47, which makes that 47 and that 47. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I have. So let's fill in the blanks now. So what did they want us to find? They wanted us to find OM. Well, OM we said is five because the diagonals bisect each other and they gave us that 10 was the entire diagonal. So we knew it got cut in half. DOL, DOL, well, that's 90 because the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Let's see, DLO, DLO is that 47. We got that 47 because the angles in a triangle add up to 180. Okay, what else? And then we had PL. Hmm, how long is PL? Didn't figure that one out yet. So you know what? I'm going to put a pin in this one and come back to it. DML. Let's see. DML. DML. That's over here. That's 43. Oops, I put it in the wrong spot. DML is 43. And why do we know that that was 43? Oh, you know what we did? That was the other side of an isosceles again. Because triangle DLM is isosceles with congruent base angles. So that worked out. DLM, well, DLM is this whole thing. That's going to be 94, really, because I knew that they were both 47. So now it's starting to get wishy-washy with what rule do I need. But what I'm going to put in here is I knew DLM is 94 because if one side of it's 47, so is the other one. So that was because the diagonals bisect the angles. So I knew I had two 47s. And then PML, we know is 86 because again, the diagonals bisect the angles. All right, now the one we didn't have was PL. So I'm gonna come back here and erase a bunch of stuff and see what can I get from here? Well, if I'm just dealing with side lengths, I knew it. these are 13 and that's five and they really want PL. You know what I didn't also write in here? Is this. This thing right here is a right triangle and that right triangle has sides of 5, 13, and x. And if you remember, hopefully from middle school, something called the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the two things that make the 90 degree angle. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared means 5 squared plus x squared is 13 squared which means 25 plus x squared is 169. That means x squared is 144. Square root both sides. And I get x is 12. So this is 12 and that's 12, making PL 24 because of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, interesting. So that's kind of a new twist. We haven't done Pythagorean theorem yet. All right. Well, now I'm just going to go through and do more property stuff with this rhombus. Um, and you're going to follow along with me. And then you're going to practice with the homework. All right, so number four, diagram of rhombus, PQRS. Cool, if it's a rhombus, I automatically know this and I know that. 
blah 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 blah. PR is 16. So instead of writing 16, I'm going to write 8 and 8. And SQ is 30. I'm going to write 15 and 15. It says determine and state the perimeter of PQRS. Well, that means I need this because they didn't give it to me. I'm going to do Pythagorean theorem again. I have this 8 here. I have that 15 there, and that's X. So 8 squared plus 15 squared is X squared. 64 plus 225. So 289 equals X squared. And if you square root that, you're going to get 17. So I know that all of these sides are 17. So our perimeter is just 4 times 17, which is 68. Okay, fine. Then it says if angle PQR, so if this entire angle here is 56, find QPR. They want me to find this. All right, I'm going to erase some things because I wrote kind of big and it's getting all jumbled. So they're telling me that I know this whole thing is 56 and they want that. Well, if I know PQR is 56, I know the diagonal cuts that in half. So 56 divided by 2 is 28. So that piece is 28. And then 90 plus 28 is 118. So 180 minus 118 is 72. And that's going to be this thing over here. Just use the properties. All right, last one. Use the properties of the Ramas to find X. Huh. Okay. They don't give me a lot. And those are in different triangles. So I'm just going to figure out what I can. If I know this is a rhombus, I know these are equal. I don't know that that really helps. I do know that this is 90. And that's, oh, so if that's 90 and this half is three, uh, 6x plus 5, then this half is 2 because the diagonal bisected that angle. So each side of the angle is equal. So now I know 3x plus 4 plus 6x plus 5 plus 90 is 180 because the angles in that triangle have to add to 180. All right, so 3x and 6x is 9x. 4 plus 5 plus 90 is 99. So then I'm going to subtract 99 and get 9x equals 81. Divide by 9 and get x equals 9. That's a lot of 9s. All right. So in the end of the day, what do you need to know? You need to know that if you have a rhombus, okay, and somebody tells you, hey, M-A-T-H is a rhombus, you know that these are equal. You know that the diagonals, once drawn, are 90-degree angles, create 90-degree angles, and you know that those diagonals bisect these individual angles. And that's it. And then you use those properties to, you know, answer questions. I am done. You are done. Practice the homework and check your answers against the key. I hope everybody's having a good day and continues to do so.